Hey there folks and welcome back to Socket Sanctuary. Have you ever just sat and asked yourself the question, why? Why is there a fruit called a grapefruit when there's already a fruit called a grape? And why does Melania Trump's face look like a squished bottle of milk? And why does Radeon feel the need to keep re-releasing old GPUs while pretending they're something they're not? At least one of these questions we can find out the answer to, and Radeon has a bad habit of doing this, and the Radeon R7 450 is a fine result of their affinity to rebrand old GPUs. This particular R7 450, like many others, was destined for life in a pre-built. I found this R7 450 in a pre-built Dell. With a GPU based off the Cape Verde die, it differs quite a bit from its bigger brother, the RX 460. In fact, they're far more like distant relatives. Where the RX 460 is based off the 4th generation GCN on the 14 nanometer process, the 450 is based off the almost 9 year old GCN 1 architecture and the even older 28 nanometer process. The Cape Verde chip that this card is based off of began life as the Radeon HD 7750 in February of 2012. However, that is far from the only card that the Cape Verde chip made its way into. In fact, here's a list of GPUs that are based off of the same configuration of the Cape Verde chip as the R7 450, the Radeon HD 7750, the R7 250E, the R7 350, the Fire Pro W600, and the Fire Pro W4100, as well as some mobile chips that are roughly based off of the same die. However, it does look like the R7 450 is the final Magnus Opum of the Verde chip, the last to be released. So, over the life of the card, how has it changed, and has performance improved? Before we test it, however, let's go over the R7450's stats to see how it compares to its older sibling, the HD7750. The R7450 has 512 stream processors at 925MHz. It has a total of 8 compute units with 4GB of GDDR5. This card has a memory speed of 1125MHz with a 128-bit bus giving it a 72GB per second memory bandwidth. The only major change from the HD7750 is that the 450 has higher clocks and 4 times the VRAM. But how does the extra clock speed and VRAM equate to extra performance? We'll have to do some benchmarks to find out. In addition to testing the R7 450, we will be testing the HD7750 to see how, if at all, the performance is affected by the additional VRAM. And just for fun, we'll be including the GK208 GT730 as it is the closest performing NVIDIA counterpart. As far as games and settings go, we tried to target at least 30 FPS, so we chose the maximum settings that would allow a playable frame rate. And the games that were tested were Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Overwatch, Skyrim, Squad, Medieval Dynasty, and Red Dead Online. Alright, enough talk, onto the benchmarks. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we chose low settings at 900p. At these settings, we managed to get a miserly 26 FPS average with it only ever reaching 40 frames per second at its max. Despite the low frame rate, the game felt smooth enough with not too many jarring frame spikes. Although this may be playable if you're used to console frame rates, you could drop the resolution to 720p for a boost to the average. When compared to the HD7750, it appears as though the extra VRAM didn't really help it much as the average was only 1 FPS off from the 450. And that difference is far more likely due to the slower core clock on the 7750. The GT730 was left behind in this title at these settings, but fear not it has something up its sleeve. Stick around for next week's video to see what I mean. In Overwatch at 1080p low settings, the R7450 had an almost 60 FPS average, with it reaching as high as 90. With the frame rate never dipping below 30, with VSync turned on, you would have a smooth, screen tear free experience. Although the performance isn't that impressive, we do have to remember that it's coming from a workstation GPU. 
The Radeon HD 7750 is about 8% slower on average, with the high frame rate dipping quite a bit from that of the R7 450. The low frame rates were within margin of error across all three cards. And again, the GT730 shows that the extra cores that the Radeon cards have are paying dividends for gaming performance. In Skyrim Special Edition, at 1080p low settings, we got an average frame rate of 42. In this game, the frame rate did occasionally stutter despite the card's amount of VRAM. The stuttering is likely due to poor memory compression and a limited memory bandwidth. Newer generations of GCN and Radeon cards in general made great strides in memory compression in comparison to their older generation counterparts. Compared to the 7750, again we see an improvement. This time, the improvement was around 14% on average. One thing to note is that despite having a slower overall frame rate, the GT730 didn't suffer from stutters as frequently as the Radeon cards did. That being said, the R7450 beat the GT730 by a healthy 30% on average. Squad 1080p low settings was actually a bit of a surprise. This game is relatively hard to run, so I was not expecting a playable performance at 1080p. But despite that, the R7450 managed a solid 46 FPS on average, with it only ever dipping down to 24 when under heavy fire. In more open areas of the map, the game saw a high frame rate of 69. Nice. The HD7750 performed well in this title with a 42 FPS average, only 8% off that of the 450. Only the slower GT730 struggled in this title at these settings. Medieval Dynasty was benchmarked at the lowest settings and lowest resolution of 720p. Even so, the R7450 couldn't really play the game with an average of only 21. Despite this, it never dipped below 17, and did have a maximum of 26. When compared to the HD7750 and the GT730, the R7450 actually did alright. One thing that was noticeable was the 1GB 7750 and GT730 had all sorts of weird unloaded textures and texture bugs in this game, where the R7450 did not. Although this game was unplayable, the 450 did look noticeably better due to the extra VRAM. The last game that we tested was Red Dead Online at 720p minimum settings. Even at minimum settings, this card could not pull off a playable average with the average not even reaching 20. Unlike its counterparts, the 450 did manage to load all of the textures. The HD7750 and GT730, due to the limited VRAM, were only allowed to launch the game in windowed mode, which was thoroughly annoying. However, considering their performance, it doesn't really matter. The HD 7750's average of 20 may seem like an improvement over the 450's average of 19, but that increase is likely due to the fact that many of the textures and assets in the game would not render, allowing the GPU core to render more frames due to less being on screen. Maybe a healthy overclock would do this card some good, but that's for another time. So, with all the benchmarks wrapped up, the R7450 is on average 4 to 15% faster than the HD7750. The extra VRAM does help it in some titles, but the titles that it helps it on most, the GPU core isn't powerful enough to run them anyways. So, I can't recommend anyone go out and buy an R7450, considering you can get a used GT1030 for the same price. And when I tested the GT1030, it was on average 40% faster on over Overwatch, despite using the high preset and not the low preset, so that would be a much better gaming option. Even so, we're missing the point. There is a reason the R7450 was resigned to pre-builds and OEMs. It's because it's a good, cheap, power-efficient way to get multiple display outputs and GPU acceleration in workstation-grade computers. However, for gaming, it's a solid pass. That'll be it for this episode. Thank you folks for watching. If you liked or hate what you saw, feel free to hit the like or dislike button, subscribe if you want to, and leave a comment. I always read them. So thank you folks for watching. May your frame rates be high and your prices low. And I will catch you folks next time.